How's everything going today, guys? My name is Copycat, and welcome to another Echo Base video. We're here, I wanted to showcase 35 hidden abilities that you can use to your advantage in The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. I'm gonna go over a few little known features, unintended exploits, and even glitches that can help you out on your adventures. Most of which I really wish I knew about from the very beginning, as they truly make things easier. I guarantee you'll see things that you've never seen before. And if you like these type of videos, then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. To start off, I want to look at a few interesting things that can be done with the bed that you might not have known of. Beginning with the fact that you can use them to restore your hearts, which can be super useful to get you out of some very sticky situations. This is done by just going up to the bed, then resting in it. Where the old bed restores half a heart, the soft bed restores one heart, and Zelda's bed restores two hearts. However, this doesn't stack while you're sleeping. You can however just get out of bed, then go back into bed, which is the only way you can continuously gain health. Being a useful tool in a lot of situations, especially if you have no smoothies in your inventory. The other thing I want to talk about when it comes to this object, is when you combine it with the Tornado Echo. Being able to essentially launch yourself through the air so you can reach higher up areas. To do this, place down a bed, then stand at the end in whichever direction you want to travel. Then switch to the Tornado and send it out in front of you. For some reason this will cause you to go flying, letting you scale cliffs relatively quickly. If you want to take things even further, then use your reverse bind ability on the bed. Then in this state you'll be able to span the Tornado which will launch you in some crazy ways. But this method isn't very controllable and most of the time you'll just travel in an unintended random direction. Still cool though. Next up I want to look at the pot, which has a couple of cool uses that I didn't even realize. First being that you can actually hide within them to avoid detection from guards as well as enemies. Honestly during these parts I either took the high ground or just ran as fast as I could which worked way more often than it didn't. As in this game you realize pretty early on that there's more than one way to complete puzzles. Also you can use these pots to negate the effects of particular foes. Specifically looking at the Redead, which usually stuns anything around it with its terrifying screams. If you're wearing the pot, then for some reason this won't work against Zelda. So remember that if you're ever having trouble with this certain baddie. Next I want to look at the different types of meat, that you may have discovered can be used to distract foes. Having them rush to the food to eat it so they become open to any attacks. Now, people have discovered that it can be used in combination with basically any bird echo to perpetually fly. Done by binding with them, then placing the food in front of them, then picking it up and immediately reverse binding. If you did it right, then the bird will try to go after the meat, but because you're holding it, it will never reach it. Reminding me a lot of putting a carrot on a stick, then dangling it in front of a donkey to get it to move. Although, I'm pretty sure that's just supposed to be a joke and this never actually happens in real life, but I at least enjoy seeing the meme realized here. One echo that's pretty common in the game and actually has way more uses than I even realized is the wind cannon, which is a cannon that blows strong gusts of wind that can really put you off balance, but also can be used to your advantage to clear mounds of sand as well as push baddies into a void. One thing you can do with it however that I didn't even for some reason realize is that you can blow out fires, including if Zelda is the one going up in flames. This is a pretty little thing that could get you out of some trouble, although there are better ways of doing so, but still, it is good to know that it's an option. You could also use these cadence to push forward usually immobile echoes to fight enemies, with the best example of this being the sea urchin, as it has an extremely spiky body that damages anything it comes in contact with. This really won't do much in the long run, but at least is a way to pull off a ranged attack, especially early in the game if you don't have much to work with. Lastly, I want to look at a really cool vehicle that you can actually create by using the cannon and a table. Done by placing both down, then by standing on the table and binding with the cannon and walking to the edge of it. If done correctly, then you'll begin to move in a straight line and won't stop until you hit an obstacle. This is more of a cool thing that you can show your friends rather than something you go to a lot during your gameplay. Reminding me of something that you would see in Tears of the Kingdom. 
the plot bloom has a very interesting exploit that you can easily perform that allows you to reach the maximum height of the game insanely quickly. To pull this off, you just have to place one plat boom down, jump on it, then ride it to the top, where there, you then need to place another one at your apex and then jump onto it. You'll see that the one that you just placed can go way higher in the air than the first, even reaching the maximum height, probably due to the fact that the game for some reason recognizes that mid-air as neutral ground, allowing you to get basically anywhere. Another echo that allows you to reach some pretty tough to get to places in the game, here by scaling walls and cliff sides, is the Gust Master. Literally all you have to do is put one of these things down, then stand behind it as close as you can and bind with it. Where you'll see that if you begin to move towards walls, then you actually just walk up them instead. Unfortunately this device only gusts for a small amount of time, so you can only go up so far. Meaning that there's definitely better things to use, but it's still interesting to see. One exploit that's pretty hard to pull off, but I could see being really useful during speedruns, involves the trampoline and some insane timing. You just need to place a trampoline down, then jump on it, and immediately place another one in front of you so that you'll just barely touch it as it spawns in, and you'll see that you can bounce in mid-air. Now, I tried to practice this for a long time, and I came to the conclusion that I just really suck at it, and was just never able to chain them together properly. Now, I have seen some people online do this very efficiently, so I do believe someone will master this one day, and you'll see it in a world record speedrun. Okay, now it's time to talk about what's probably the most OP object in the game, in the water block. That's usually just used to platform either vertically or horizontally, but has another use that's just as good. If you place one down while you're in a battle with foes, then you can bind with those foes and drag them into the water which you'll see will literally kill most of them. When I talk more in depth about the bind feature later, then you'll see the true potential of its ability. So you guys should really stay to the end and watch the whole video if you want to see that. Next, I want to talk about a method that I used a lot when fighting with enemies during my playthrough that I found super effective in spamming attacks. I noticed very quickly that some of the melee-based echoes would attack immediately when you place them out where you could lock onto your foe and continuously just press Y, where you'll notice that you can clear a path in pretty much no time. Also, if you combine this with the ability to place echoes out at a range by holding Y, then you can stand back and stay safe, especially against tanky creatures. Next, I feel like I should talk about a few echoes that can phase through walls and attack or trigger things on the other side, which allows you to solve puzzles with little to no effort. An example of this would be with the guinea, that are ghost-like beings that you can see, well, act like ghosts, and can pass through obstacles on their way to their target. The other is the Poe, which can teleport and allows you to light torches way far away in the distance. Of course, you could just place something like the Ignazoles at range, or send out a fire keys. Either or works. There are also ranged attack options like the Octorox, but they have limitations so they aren't always good. A very important move that I feel like the game doesn't make clear is incredibly useful is the spin one, done by pressing R. I use this mainly as a method to gain movement speed when running or swimming, also being helpful to clear blades of grass, but it actually has a few more uses that aren't really apparent. These include being able to use it to pass basically any wind cannon, being able to block projectile attacks if your timing is perfect, being able to spin, then jump at the end of the spin, which will allow you to travel further, kind of like in Donkey Kong Country. Being able to get the spin brace, then knocks foes back, found in this cave just east of Scrubton. And finally, increasing your spin radius if you're wearing the dancing outfit, gotten by completing the Mango Rush challenge on the highest difficulty. Something that actually works really well in conjunction with the brace. One feature I didn't know about until much later in my adventure, is that you can pick up most flying echoes and use them as a method to glide off cliff sides and explore Hyrule in a different way. This works with the Crow, the Needlefly, the Zero, the Giro, the Pea Hat, the Gwei, the Beacon, the Mothula, and every single type of Keys. Now, I believe they all have the same flight duration, except technically the Giro, as it blows air outwards, so you can go just a little bit farther. 
Next, I want to showcase a few echoes that you can reverse bind to, and use as a method to travel way faster than normal. Ones that instantly come to mind as good for this are the Pathblade and the Amp, as both will travel in a straight line until they hit an obstacle, which will then just cause them to change directions. Amps are doubly useful in 2D environments, as you can just use them to complete basically any puzzle without really doing much. You can also use creature echoes like the Karo Modillo or Mini Moldorm, but they're way less efficient and sort of unpredictable. Oh yeah, you also can reverse bind the Crawchula and use it to literally crawl indefinitely up any slope. Something I've talked about at length in past videos, so I won't go over them too much here. One technique that boosts the usefulness of certain echoes is if you place usually immobile ones on certain objects and bind with those objects so you can move them around making them become very powerful mobile killing machines. This works best with the Deku Baba, which can eat most foes whole who come near it, which is now OP when it's able to move around as you can bring it to the enemies instead of vice versa. The Beemos is another thing that you can put on objects and move around, transforming it from a stationary turret into a sort of tank that becomes really deadly. This also works if you place them on a path blade, giving you a 2 for 1 combo which is pretty insane. At last, we can talk about just how powerful the bind technique is, where we've already looked at a handful of uses, but there's actually so many more. One is that you can actually pull at certain enemies to hinder them, being able to take away shields, as well as pluck most flowers out of the ground to more easily defeat them. You can bind with your echoes and position them in the best spots to do maximum damage. Something I didn't do much, but now realize how cheap this maneuver is. You can also draw enemies into holes that are made by the hole mills, which actually kills anything that can fit within it at least. I feel like there could have been way more that I missed out on, so if that's true, then please let me know in the comments below. Finally, to cap this video off, I want to look at the insane Wrong Warp Sign Glitch, which lets you get to the end of the game by pulling off a series of very strange moves. Now, I'm not an expert of what exactly is going on, but from what I can gather, it has something to do with placing the sign near the map's edge, then reading it and opening your menu at the same time, which glitches things up. Here you'll see that the menu's up, but you can also play the game. Next, you have to pull some really complicated moves, so many of which that I didn't really understand how to do them, so I really encourage you to search for other videos where smarter people did this, because I don't feel like I'm explaining this perfectly, so I'm just going to put that out there. However you're able to do this, it for some reason pulls you right into Null's dungeon. Where, again, I'm not an expert so I don't know how exactly this works. I'm just astonished anyone even figured out this was a thing, especially so early in the game's release window. This is kind of ironic as I place it as the worst echo in my worst echoes video, and somehow in that little amount of time, it became one of the best things to use ever. Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you like the Zelda content I've been making lately, then please subscribe to my channel, hit that bell, and go follow my Instagram at copycatgamer, where there I upload some cool clips and items from my collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!